everyone, and welcome to Valentine Panic. It's a visual novel slash memory game created by, by Michelle Oz, the creator of visual novels such as Use Me, and this was released back in February on Valentine's Day, no less. And last month, and it was released on Steam, and since I already had had the game. She sent me a, a Steam key, so a bunch of other people and I got lucky, I guess. <laughs> In case you're wondering why I'm recording this now, it's because I, I wasn't sure exactly. Okay, it's kind of like this. this. Back when Valentine's Panic first came out, I was going to do a playthrough of it, but while I was recording, OBS was kind of a butt to me. I was gonna- and then I was gonna, uh, install this game onto my computer earlier, but then the Wi-Fi was a butt to me. A whole other butt. But enough talk about butt. Let's just play the game. Hmm. What's your name? What's your name? You know what? Let's go with the same name that I did in my Excuse Me playthrough. Chris. <clears throat> Signing up for a part-time job was never easy, especially post-holidays. A lot of stores and businesses only hired extra employees during the holiday rush, but now that the holidays were over, there was no need to hire more people for work. Trying to find a job during this time was torture enough. However, when your parents tell you to get off your butt and find a job, you pretty much don't have a choice in the matter. If only life was as easy as it was in simulation games, you could find a job, hang out with friends, and be happy with someone you eventually grow to love for the rest of your life. Yeah. If only. Sadly, life is not that easy. Alright, we'll call you if we think you're the right fit. Thanks for stopping by. You're welcome. If I'm the right fit? Really? You can't tell if I am one from my interview? Well, they kind of have to think these things over, I guess. Jeez. This was the fifth job I had applied for this week. I was good at interviews, but luck seemed to walk right out the door along me, alongside me each time I was given a chance at employment. Needless to say, I was in the pickle. What am I going to do now? I was certain that I wasn't going to find anything around town. I thought about looking around the city, but the price of the commute would not have been worth it. I was stuck in a place where nothing was available. Willing to sigh, I mentally waved my a white flag of surrender to life and started to prepare myself for the rant of a lifetime from my parents. Until... Oh, here we go. The... Okay, I am just not gonna spoil anything. So I'm just not gonna. I'm just gonna try not to spoil anything from this game because I've played it already. So if I don't seem surprised at anything, that's probably why. Huh? Hello? Hello! Is this an adorable youth in need of a job? Yes. Yes, I am, Kay. What the? Yes? This is Chris. Who is this? Wait, I called her Kay earlier, didn't I? Darn it! Oh, just a concerned third party. I heard that there was someone going around looking for a job, and I just so happened to have a job opening at my cafe. Hmm. Wait, really? My heart jumped into my throat. This was my chance. However, something seemed off about this. Yeah. Quote unquote something. Would that something be the fact that someone just randomly called you? How did this person get my number? Of course! Have you heard of the Pink Lady Cafe? We've recently renovated the place and expanded, so we need more hands on deck. I'm just gonna give you a little bit of a tip. The Pink Lady Cafe was featured in Seduce Me. Provided that at I played Naomi's route of Seduce Me 
even though it wasn't shown on my channel, I know exactly what the Pink Lady Cafe is. And who you are, okay? A cafe, huh? That probably means I become aware of something like that. No way, but it's job. So, what do you say? Would you like an interview? Absolutely! Excellent! I will schedule you for... Uh, still gotta get through that Netflix series. An hour from now. Wait, what? Oh, relax! I was contacted by the last person you were interviewed, and they said that you didn't go far. I'm just around the corner so you can relax and prepare before the interview happens. Uh, exactly. How does that person know how far I've gone? Okay? Awesome! I'll see you then. Okay, goodbye. That was really weird. Still, I got one last chance to get a job. I can't look at the gift horse in the mouth now. It was better than nothing. Taking a deep breath, I looked at the Pink Lady Cafe and say it as much as I could. The Pink Lady Cafe, a cafe that opened 10 years ago? At least it was an established place. Owned by K. Okay, K who? The woman that just called you, maybe? Does this K not have a last name? What about a first name? What is K supposed to be? Her initial? Hmm. Whatever. I decided to move on and keep reading. Apparently, the cafe's focus was coffee, sweets, and relaxation. Sure, they offered other things on the menu, but their primary projects were big goods. So, this really is a cafe. The decor seems nice. A lot of pink, though. Well, it is called the Pink Lady Cafe. Well, it was called the Pink Lady Cafe for a reason. Thank you! I started to make my way to the address list on the site and continued to read on. As soon as I arrived, I could tell something was off. Hello? Hello! We'll be right with you. Okay, I'll be waiting, Leia. Come on, get in the bird! I was shocked to see no one else in the cafe besides for a guy dressed as a chef sitting at a table and a girl rushing into the kitchen. Trinity, calm down. We'll get the ingredients. Leah, you are not helping. Out! Yeah, Leah, you're not helping Trinity. Eep! Eep! <laughs> I, always I always found that little... I always found that little squeak that Leah did to be pretty adorable. <laughs> Is that weird that I think that's... Nope. Okay, moving on. Before I could blink, the girl apparently named Leia came running out in a panic. After getting her, her breathing to slow down, she looked back into the kitchen with a grimace. I told you not to reorganize the pantry. I just wanted to help, that's all. Yeah, she just wanted to help. Eh, it's alright, Leah. Trinity's just freaky obsessed with her organization, that's all. She'd even kick out her own brother to reorganize everything. And the brother is you. Well, she is your sister, so you'd know best. Told ya. <laughs> <laughs> um, excuse me? Finally, Leah and the waiter finally turned to look at me, taking in the fact that I was waiting. Oh, hello. Can we help you? Yeah, you can help me get a job! Um, yes. I was scheduled for an interview in about uh, half an hour. At that moment, the waiter, the waiter and Leah looked at each other in shock. Is this the person? The one Kay told us to test? Perhaps. Wait, test? Sounds about right. Hold on, what do you mean test? Finally, the pair looked at me and pointed at the entrance into the kitchen. Interview starts in there. Okay. It's all yours. Okay. Um, okay? Yep. This was not an ordinary job interview. Pots and pans over here, please. On it. On it. Faster would be better, Joey. <laughs> Joey. Don't rush me. I'm not Quinn, Trinity. I uh, know. Quinn would have done that and made both the coffee and tea in half the time. I slowly made my way to the kitchen and watched as the chef and the waiter scrambled around the kitchen trying to reorganize the entire room. The girl, Trinity, seemed flustered and was leading the charge, but the guy, Joey, seemed to be very relaxed in the situation. Done. Next. <laughs> Hold on, who are you? Uh... Hi. Finally, Trinity, Trinity and jo 
Oh, he turned to me as he took notice of the new person in the room. I wasn't exactly dressed the way, dressed like they were, so it was definitely something that hindered their pro progress if I was in the way. Hi, uh, I was told my interview would be in here. A moment of silence before Joey raised his hands up slightly and shook his head. Trinity, the new person is all yours. Well, thanks a lot for, for abandoning me, Joey. Huh? I looked at Trinity as she crossed her arms and examined me intensely. I felt completely stripped under her gaze, but I remained in my spot, unsure of what to do in the first place. Finally, Trinity sighed and gestured to a sealed fridge. Eggs, milk, flour, and butter. Okay. What? I watched as she turned and brought out a mixing bowl and a hand mixer. Joey stepped back and leaned back against the counter, watching me curiously. Was this my interview? Okay. I quickly made my way to the fridge and took the cook inside. Despite hearing that things were reorganized, the fridge was almost packed in. How was I going to find what Trinity asked for? Oh, memory game! Oh, yeah. Here we go. Nail it. Nail it. Not nailing it! Not nailing it! You gotta be nailing it soon. And this one. I briskly returned to Trinity with the ingredients she needed in hand. I was surprised at how fast I was able to sort through everything and find the exact food items required. Impressed, Trinity shared. <clears throat> shared. What am I doing? Impressed, Trinity stared at me with a, a slightly pursed and amused slip. Huh. Huh. I mentally patted myself on the shoulder. I knew I was quick to adapt, and this was definitely a show of my quick reaction skills. Maybe I wouldn't fail in the same year after all. Trinity looked at Joey and jerked her head towards the exit lightly. Well then, it's your turn. Take him. Alright, follow me please. Okay. I looked at Joey as he ushered me to follow him. I took in a breath and left the kitchen. Another test? Maybe I'd be even faster in at the front of the cafe. I was led out to the front where Leah and the guy I assumed to be Quinn sat at a nearby table. Joey observed them for a moment and moved towards the cashier before gesturing to Quinn and Leah. Take their order and serve them. Okay. I threw up my eyebrows. Is I not going to get a notepad? Joey raised an eyebrow at me, most likely waiting for me to move, but if I knew anything about being a leader, I was supposed to have some physical orders on. <laughs> Leah giggled slightly and, and smiled towards me. We are a notepad-free establishment. Huh? Notepad-free? Meaning that the servers have to memorize their customers' orders. It's to help reduce waste to protect the environment. Huh. That's convenient. That made sense. Even if servers use tape tablets, we'd have to charge them every time they ran out of power, and I was pretty sure that would add to the electric bill. Since the cashier line can get pretty long with pickup orders, we have servers who can take orders at the table and booths for customers who are here to stay a while. Understand now? Understood. I can only nod. It made sense. Still, it made busting tables a little more daunting of an idea. At least this place wasn't, wasn't entirely huge. I took in a breath and approached the table with a smile as natural as that could to muster. What would you two like? <laughs> I'd like a mocha latte with a baked cheesecake slice, please. Mocha latte, baked cheesecake. Got it. Black coffee and some tiramisu. Thank you. Black coffee, tiramisu. Okay, got it. And... Quickly, I nodded in some sort of affirmation to the order and rushed over to the counter right below the... The order for out of my memory. And by memory, I mean this! So, how has everyone else's day been? And, did I say bang? How has everyone else's day been? Mine has been good. I made eye contact with someone I didn't really want to make eye contact with. But other than that, it was good. I was genuinely surprised at how well I handled myself. I managed to get both orders in and out to the table within a minute. Wow, very impressive. Just like the kitchen. Maybe you are the person we need what? for the Valentine's Day rush. I was made 
majorly confused. Were those tests part of my interview? What about me with Kay? A manager? This seemed a bit too convenient to just do stuff of the plant from the job. Where does me more? My phone began to buzz. That must be Kay. Did you text her, Joey? Yeah, I let her know the results. Go ahead and pick it up. Trinity, get in here! In a second! One second later. She's here. Oh! Okay. I slowly answered, not expecting what I heard next. Congratulations! You got the job! Oh, thank you! Wait, huh? I'm sorry, hold on a second. I got the job? How? What about the interview? That was your interview! We don't want to waste time with just questioning people, so we drop them straight into a simulation of work to see how well they hold up. Lo and behold, you passed! Can I just say something? This is how all job interviews should go. Just saying. Okay, this is weird. Doesn't seem weird to me. So, those tests before the position? I guess, uh... I was really at a loss for words. Okay, I can only laugh at, on the other line as the other people around me seem to be amused by my expression. It's alright! I know we kind of threw you into the deep end really fast, but we had to make sure you were someone we could trust during the Valentine's Day rush! The Valentine's Day rush? What do you mean? I knew Valentine's Day was a big day for couples and the like, but I was not expecting cafes to go, go crazy with customers. Kay, however, seemed to understand my confusion and explain further. Well, at the Pink Lady Cafe, we host an annual Valentine's Day rush event where couples can come in for three days and enjoy a small moment of joy in a warm cafe. Oh, it's super romantic, don't you think? As romantic as it can get, I guess. I guess? What makes this event super popular is that everything on the menu is half off! Whoa! Half off with desserts and coffee? That's a bold step for a cafe. The event has gotten so popular that we can barely keep track of ourselves each year. That's why we expanded and we reached out to get more help on board. And now we have you, a magnificent fifth member. <laughs> How exciting! Wait, hold on. I didn't say that I... Ah. <laughs> oh my god. I apologize. I'm going way too fast for my own good. I forgot to ask you if you even wanted the job. So... Will you? So, exactly... Yeah. My head was spinning. I was the extra help for a mega cafe rush? I mean, it made sense, but I would have at least expected... I would have at least appreciated an explanation before being tested out of the blue. So, from the looks of it, if this event really was a big deal, then the cafe needed all the help it could get, and I need a job. Two birds, one stone, right? What's the... The payroll? <laughs> You'll be paid $750 for the week of Valentine's Day Rush. Wait, what? $750 for a week of work? What? What? Another ballsy step for... Another ballsy step for a cafe. For, sell for selling products at half price, how well off is this cafe? At my aghast expression, the people around me started to laugh, probably only seeing why I was so shocked. Did she mention the pay? That shocked me too the first time. Yeah, I can imagine. Well, this cafe's been in good business for a long time now. I'm not surprised at the good pay. So, what do you say now? At that pay, you would be crazy not to accept. Only an idiot would have declined the job knowing that pay. I happily accept the job. The group around me cheered and happy at my answer. <laughs> awesome! I'm excited. Since the event starts next week, I'll let the group instruct you on how to get ready. I hope everything works out! <laughs> okay, calm down! You're getting a little too excited here! Before I question came more, she hung up, leaving me in the hands of my new co-workers. So, looks like you have to make a choice, newbie. Huh? Which section will you be working? In the kitchen with Trandy and Quinn, or up here in the front with me and Leah? Hmm. After I was looking to each of the, the employees and thought, I had to choose? I was good with both jobs, but I guess I had to focus on one side to work, work more efficiently. I didn't want to ruin the clockwork of the cafe by doing both. I thought about the people in each section. Trudy and Quinn were obviously the chefs of the cafe, and third would help, 
At least it's someone who, who could fetch their ingredients and make sure everything was in order. However, Leah and Joey were friends, and who knew how many people were going to be, be needing service come Valentine's Day? I had to weigh out my options. KitchenAid or server? Alright, give me a second. Okay, I got put some saving in, and now I am ready. So, first things first, we are going to be a server. Huh, I am locking on your achievement, it seems. <laughs> Since I was going to work in the front with Joey and Leah, I was given a uniform to wear. I matched the two of them, and luckily enough, I was told I could adjust the outfit to whatever style I wanted, at, as long as it was appropriate for a cafe. Sorry, I kind of imagined myself in Leah's outfit for a moment. Joey and Leah seemed to be happy to have me on board, and I couldn't blame them. If the rush was going to be as crazy as I imagined, then the more people who were in the front, the better. I look forward to working with you. Same here. It would be good to have some help. Trinity and Quinn could run the kitchen together just fine for the rush. Right. It felt a little weird to be dressed for, like a server for a cafe. Mind you, not many local cafes even had servers, so I was definitely in for a new experience. At least the outfit I wore looked good on me. My two co-workers didn't look half bad either. In fact, it made me more excited to work with them. Leah was like a ball of sunshine, friendly and kind, but I could tell she saw the world with rose tinted glasses. It almost felt inhumane to think about, but imagining her, her angry or even remotely upset seemed to curiosity just to compare with her smile. Joey, on the other hand, was more of a mystery to me than anything else. He put up a strong and almost stoic exterior, but somehow managed to pull charm out of thin air as if it was peeking through the cracks of his shell. I couldn't help but wonder why that was. I understand how you feel. Guys with a tint of mystery to them. <laughs> yes. Stop it. Stop it. Focus on the game. Got it. Stop. Got it. Focus on this game. No questions. Just focus. Both of them, however, ran the front like clockwork. Joey ensured the organization of the cashier and counter while Malia made her job clean and organized the tables and booths. So, was the cafe closed today? Huh? Oh, yes. Kay is on a business trip while our supervising manager, Naomi, is in France for a demonstration. You know how I mentioned Naomi earlier? Yeah, she's the manager of the Pink Lady Cafe. When both the owner and the manager are gone for a period of time, we close the cafe on the first day to prepare for the day after. The next day we open, and everything runs smoothly with no one knowing the wiser. Smart! Smart! It's nice when things go smoothly. Then again, nothing wrong ever happens here. <laughs> How can you be so sure of that? You really shouldn't say like it's impossible for bad things to happen, Leah. Well, I haven't seen anything bad happen here since I started working here. And I've been here longer than you, Joey. Never say never. Leah was definitely the optimist of the pair. It had been rather refreshing. It was rather refreshing to see such positivity, but Joey had a point. You should never jinx luck by saying nothing bad will happen. Well... I want to say that positivity is good to have, because it is, but... Especially considering the fact that I was actually planning to go on Joey's route, I'm gonna have to say that's better to be realistic. At least someone shares my sentiment. Thank you. <laughs> I guess I'll have to be the positive one of our trio. <laughs> you really do find the smallest bits of joy in any situation, don't you? There's always a good side to every scenario. Despite the differences between them, working with Leah and Joey looked like it was going to be a lot of fun. Alright, here we go. First day of work! My first day of work was definitely not what I expected. I, expected to go I was asked to go in at 6am and was scheduled until 8pm later in the day. I can only hope that the rush would not run me over. 
When I arrived, there was already a line circling around the block. Oh, great. Holy crap! Hey! Over here! I'm coming, Quinn! A little step into the alley and I found myself- And I found the back entrance to the cafe. Perfect. Come on! We gotta meet and psych ourselves up! Alright then. Right! Once inside, I was greeted with an anxious energy. I could tell that the four of my co-workers were nervous, but I, but as I was the new person, I knew I added a hefty amount of my own into the mix. So, are we ready to open the gates? You make it sound like this is a terrible thing. It's not terrible more so than it's exhausting. I'm sure we'll be fine. Just gotta pace ourselves. Well, there's no pacing in the memory games. Despite the fear of the day ahead, with a solid nod from each person, we were ready to go. This panic was not going to do me in, and I had to make sure I pulled my weight. I did not want this event to fail because of a mistake I made. And thus, the event began and the crowd flooded in. It flooded in. Thank you so much for coming! How may we serve you, ma'ams? Working in the front was actually a bit terrifying. Couples and groups began, began pouring in, hoping to, what, hoping to snack a sweet or two for the su sale price that the event offered. I found myself rushing back and forth between tables, making me work my brain hardcore. How can I help you today? Can I get some macarons and coffee, please? Alright. Macarons, coffee, guys. I'd like some tea and tiramisu. Tea, tiramisu. A milkshake is just fine for me, thank you. Milkshake. One slice of your famous strawberry cake, please. And strawberry cake. Alright, got it. Anyway, about the eye contact with the aforementioned person earlier. I mean, it's not as if making eye contact with someone else is a bad thing, but if you knew who I was talking about and the kind of situation I was in with that person, then you kind of understand where I'm coming from. Anyway, we got it! Good job! Thank you, Leah! Huh? Oh, thanks! I managed to serve my customers perfectly within a minute of each other. Seeing their faces light up at my fast delivery made me feel a little proud of the work I was doing. See them enjoy the food I gave them just by a pinch of accomplishment. Hey, don't let it get to your head. We have more customers. Huh? Oh, right! At least Joey and Leah helped kept me in reality. I was pretty sure that later in the week I would adjust to, to the flow of the cafe, and eventually everything would become routine and almost tedious. But now, though, everything was a new experience. At some point in time, the crowd seemed to die down a bit, at least to where for the three of us could relax for a minute or two. I managed to sneak behind the cashier and sit down, cutting down on my feet for a long period of time. How do servers survive? Well, my mother was a server for a little while. Just ask her! Joey walked around the counter and spied me, crossing his arms and raising an eyebrow at me before shrugging and organizing some of the pastries in, this, in the display. Tired already? <laughs> yeah, I'm bushed. Don't give up just yet. We've got a couple more hours to go before we close up. I threw up my eyebrows and looked up at the clock on the wall. He was right. It was only 1 p.m. We he had seven more hours to go before we could call it a day. Jeez. <laughs> Don't stress out too much. Leah's taken most of the weight. Take a break. Huh? I peeked up over the counter to see Leah still on top of her game, dusting tables and serving the small line of customers still flowing in. The click of her heels made, made me drop my jaw. She hadn't sat down or stopped once. I felt bad that she was taking the brunt of the work, but hearing Joey's statement, I could tell that this was normal for her. So, I'm just gonna stay with Joey, okay? Leah was used to the this kind of work. I, however, wasn't, and neither was Joey, apparently. I rested my head back against the counter for laying out a silent sap. Joey chuckled at the side, shaking his head. Jeez, did that really wear you out? Well, in real life, this probably would, actually. Well, yeah, now it's a lot of people to serve. Well, it wasn't as bad as last year. We had a much smaller space and no breaks between customer waves. 
Really? Well, actually, that's true, considering that the, the Pink Lady Cafe introduced me was relatively smaller. Joey nodded. I can only imagine the hectic rush in the small cafe. I probably would have found some, some inner claustrophobia. Joey continued to organize pastries as he, he continued his story. It was my first year working here. I was pretty much like you my first day of the rush, but I was able to shake it off. To tell the truth, I was thankful for just having the job in the first place. For a moment, Joey paused and stared at the cinnamon bun in his hand. Give me that cinnamon bun, I want that cinnamon bun. Lost in some sort of nostalgic thought. Whether it was good or bad, I couldn't tell, but I knew that he was gracious either way. In a sense, I, I was the same way. I didn't get a job and luck brought me here, so I understood it. I feel ya. Joey turned his head to look at me and nodded, taking in my statement for what it was before standing and looking out the window. Avast you scurvy dogs! A people storm is approaching. Aye, 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 Captain Leah! Got it. Come on. Before I knew it, I was back on my feet and the rush began again. Began again. The winds alternated with breaks in between, but I somehow managed to survive all the way till 7 p.m. Day one closed with us barely having the energy to speak to each other, only able to say our byes for the night. Day two was barely different from the first. With the next day being Valentine's Day, a large rush of people piled in, most likely to not get trampled during the, the bigger holiday. At least my body was getting used to it. A little bit. You ready? Aye aye, Captain! I'm sure we'll be fine. You said that yesterday. Well, none of us died, did we? Hey, we're here, right? We were fine yesterday, too. Thank you, Quinn! Save that energy for the crowds. Okay, here we go. The second day in the front was a bit heavier than the first. Being that we were a day away from Valentine's Day, we had to manage. Hey, do you mind bussing the tables on the right? They just sat down. Got it! Better hurry and fill those orders. More people are coming. As much as Joey's words didn't help, I had to focus. I'm pretty sure that E isn't supposed to be there. And I also didn't want to screw up second day on the job. Hello, how can I help you today? Uh, I'll just have some creme brulee. Thanks. You're welcome. I'd like ice cream. Chocolate, please. Mmm, chocolate ice cream. Yeah, no, it's for the customer. It's for the customer. A coffee and some cheesecake. A coffee and some cheesecake. Got it. Can I get tea and macarons? Okay. Here we go. Alright. No more fooling around. We've got to get serious now. Macarons. Got it. And... Chocolate ice cream. Nope, that was a macaron. Macaron. Ah, dang it. But at least I know what the ice cream is. And the cheesecake. And there! And just like that, I had nailed my orders. Leah and Joey seemed proud. Leah giving me a smile, and Joey saying a small nod in my way. Hey, in approval. Oh, I was nailing this! But I can only assume that the experience of the first day has taught me well. At long last, the wave that had been rushing in finally came to a slow beat, slow enough for us to take a break and breathe. Despite being fully energized yesterday, Leah seemed a little more exhausted than expected. Hey, Leah, are you okay? Huh? Oh yeah, I'm fine. Thanks for asking. You're welcome. No problem. Leah gently leaned against the slight counter and wiped her head with her, her, her pink handkerchief. Find out if you saw it, leaving our breathy laugh. Today is going to be long, but at least people are enjoying their food. It took a moment for me to get what Leo was saying. The customers were eating their meals, were happily chatting or lost in their own worlds, smiles painting their faces with genuine joy. I guess that was the benefit of working in such a place. However, one thing was off. Where's Joey? Leah listened to my question and looked around, coming curious as well, before laying out a small sigh. He's probably in the alley listening to music. If you want to check up on him, you can. He'll be back in a minute. Hopefully he'll let me listen to some of his music. Yeah, if you know what I mean. 
As much as I trusted Leah, I knew that affects his music. Listening for too long, and you can lose track of time. Yeah, I know that feel. As someone who tends to listen to music a lot, I walked out of the cafe and went into the alleyway in the kitchen, spying Joey leaning against the wall and gently bobbing his head to music, earbuds sing in both ears. Despite not wanting to disturb him, I knew that the break wasn't going to last long, so I walked out and stood in his line of sight, hoping to catch his attention. As he finally took in the sight of me, he slid an earbud and out of his ear and furrowed his eyebrows in confusion. What is it? Need help with something? No, I just wanted to make sure you were okay and didn't get lost in the break. Joey stared for a moment before chuckling and shaking his head. I'm all good. You don't need to worry about me. I appreciate that, though. Joey relaxed against the wall and his cell phone out of his pocket, running his thumb over the screen to possibly turn down the volume of his music before looking to me again. I used to work at a club, so music helps me relax. My mind instantly went blank. Ink. Wait, what? Wait, you work at a club? Joey nodded and lifted his phone towards me. I was an album with the silhouette of a man on a pole dancing with the ray of what gets around him. Nail pole dancer. I used to work at the Mad Vibes Club, an underground dance and strip club deep in Chicago. I was a bouncer and was part of club security. My older brother was a DJ, and my younger brother was a pole dancer. So, the man that picture was your brother. I'm just not going to question it. I was done. Through speaking so bluntly about the experience, a part of me became lost as to why he went from club bouncer to cafe waiter. Joey seemed to notice and grinned at me. Maybe tomorrow I'll tell you more. Break's over, though. I'll look forward to it. And like that, Joey made his way inside, leaving me lost and dumbfounded. Uh-huh. I quickly shook my head and rushed inside, not wanting to be late into the wit of the customers. As much as I was curious about Joey's story, I had to work. The day was rough, but with the three of us working together, we were able to serve every customer to the fullest and walk away feeling proud of the work we did. Ending the second day of work was somehow much more tiring than the first. Maybe it was because this is workload, or maybe it was because the tedious of the job has started to get to me. In a way, I had to shake it off, shake it off, <laughs> and go into the third day. Valentine's Day. Talk about being nervous. I was internally shaking. If the first two days were merely glimpses of the chaos that would occur, then the actual holiday would be a nightmare. I expected to prepare for the worst. No breaks, no time to settle into any form of autopilot mode. I had to be constantly on my toes. At least this was the last day of the event. However, one question lingered. What happens after the event? Was this job temporary, or was this going to be a job I got to keep for a while? The details were never discussed with me, but I guess I had to wait until either Kay, the owner, or, or Naomi, the manager, was available to talk about it. At least this week it was worth $750. The psych up for the third day, it seemed a little off. Despite Leah being the happy and positive one as a bunch, something about her smile seemed nervous for the day ahead. Probably for the expected crowds. Alright gang, last day of the event. We got this. We got this. Let's do the best we can. We can do this. We can relax and celebrate after. You know what Leah, you're right. Let's aim to get everything done. Then we can have a little event of our own when we close up. Woo! Valentine's Day party! We can do that? The group nodded, assuring me that a party was okay to have in the cafe after hours. I felt a little energy rush through me, excited to celebrate an event well done. I could get through this. I knew it. Alright, here we go. I was stunned to see how many people had lined up for the cafe. There was never an empty table, and the line seemed stretched endlessly beyond the front door. Needless to say, we had our work cut out for that. Us. Hey, tables on the left knee assistance. Get on that. Okay. All right. Let's do the best we can, all right? Got it. Today was the last day of the event. We had to finish it strong, and that started with the su success of the first handful of orders. Hey, how can I serve you today? Hello. Can I just get some coffee, please? Hey, not you! Ooh, your strawberry cake sounds delicious! I'll take a slice of that. Tea, please. Thank you. I'd like a milkshake, a cupcake, and some tiramisu! Oh my god, that voice is adorable. 
Alright, let's do this. Yes! Memory game. We can do this. Let's just keep reassuring ourselves of that and not get too pressured by the time allotted. And let's just get through this memory game with no problems. Almost there. Nope. And... So far, so good. I was busting out orders left and right, trying to get as much as done, as much done as possible. Sure, being a server was hard enough, but once you get the ball rolling, time seems to slip from your mind and you wind up at a low before you know it. At, le at last, crap, so it's eased up a bit. It's, and we were given some time to stop and breathe. Leah and Joey both, both walked around behind the counter and began to restock the display case while I cleaned off some tables and prepped for the next wave. I smiled as Leah... <coughs> Leah? I smiled as Leah nudged Joey and cocked her head towards the kitchen door, allowing him to pull out his headphones and plug them into his phone as he walked through. Leah, however, continued to stop the case. After him! I followed Joey out, curious to see what he was going to do besides listen to music. Was that truly all he did? Once we were in the alleyway, Joey stood by the wall of the cafe and simply leaned against it, becoming lost in the beat thrumming, through, thrumming in his earbuds. He barely even noticed that I had followed along. As soon as he did, however, he pulled out an earbud. Everything alright? Huh? Yeah, everything's fine. Then why'd you come out with me? I'm just gonna listen to music for my break. Well, there was that thing that you mentioned yesterday. I nodded, knowing that he deserved a bit of private time. However, he was right to come out. Being in the cafe seemed stifling despite the little activity. I needed fresh air. Fresh air sounded like a good idea, so I figured, why not? Joey stared before shaking his head and chuckling to himself. What? You really are indeed a strange person. Well... In real life, sometimes I could be considered strange, so you're not wrong. Huh? Where'd that come from? I wasn't being strange. If anyone was strange between us, it was him. He was the most enigmatic person working at the cafe. Yes, he was serious about his work like Trinity, but he knew how to charm customers like a pro. He was more of a mystery than I would ever be. Joey slid his thumb across his phone and pressed the lock on it, shoving it into his pocket alongside his earbuds. You've been doing good here. We're very lucky to have you on. Regardless of how interesting you are, know that we're grateful, okay? Okay. Huh? Yeah, sure. It's my job. I swear from Joey in affirmation and my head is sent spinning. Who was this guy? I started working here when my brothers moved to LA. Since the club only hired me to protect them, they didn't need me. So, they gave me the boot. Uh, oh. Oh, wow, that's rough. I suddenly realized how the transition had happened. It wasn't a good situation, but thankfully it wasn't horrible. Joey nodded and leaned his head back against the brick wall behind him. Yeah, I was wandering around trying to find a job just like you. When Kay picked me up, never expected to work as a waiter. I was more a security man. Well, you definitely got the secure look, if you know what I mean. <laughs> the K introduced me to this guy who helped me learn how to be more... charming? I guess is the word. Looked a little bit like me, except for the eyes. <laughs> so it was a little mind-boggling, to say the least. Gee, I wonder who it could be! Still, now I work a solid job with good pay and benefits. That's my story. Why tell me all of this? Another small smirk and a small salute silenced my thoughts in my brain. Well, eventually I'd like to learn your story when this event is all over and we have more free time. This was definitely a guy I wanted to get closer to. Joey pulled out his phone and checked the time, laying out a small laugh. And our break is up. Come on, we have people to serve. Joey walked to the door and opened it, gesturing me to go first. I couldn't help but smile and walk in, ready to take on the rest of the shift. You got it. It was over. It was finally over. After wave one wave of customers, we tore our way through the crowd and managed to beat every person that came in with such ease. 
The Valentine's Day rush had ended, and there were no more customers to deal with after 8 p.m. Each one of us felt sweet relief as we had twisted the deadbolt in the front door and officially locked up. We are now closed. Good work, everyone. We did it! Oh, what a week! Right? That was a lot. We definitely had more customers than last year. Well, we can thank the Biggest Space for that. Yeah! Thank you, Biggest Space! We had grouped a pair of tables together to make a, a large eating area for us. To sit down and actually be able to fully hang with the chair was an absolutely pleasurable, almost sexually so. No, we already have we already have Nina Einstein with the table. We don't need us with the chair. To think that I may have through three days of intense work, the payroll Oh, it's going to be well worth it. Clay rushed into the kitchen and brought out a, a gorgeous pink and soft yellow cake, setting it down between all of us and slicing it up for, for consumption. I suspect he pinned all it inside and couldn't wait to eat. You guys were amazing! You too! We couldn't have done this without you! I shall <laughs> I looked to see the all four of my coworkers looking up at me with genuine smiles. I couldn't help but smile as well. I was happy to help, and if I wanted to keep this job, I would be able to work with them a little while longer. As I thought of that, my phone began to buzz. Huh? Hello? Hey! Okay. I heard you did a fantastic job during the rush! I hope it wasn't too difficult to handle. Well, it's not like I have too much of a problem with memory games, so... Oh no, everything worked out in the end. Good! Awesome! Alright then! Well, I've already mailed your paycheck, so you should have it by tomorrow. But there is one question that still remains. Would I continue working there? If the question is if I want to continue working here... I'm so lonely! In all honesty, this seems like a good job to have. The pay was good, the people who worked here were great, and who knows? Maybe I can end up going far in the future thanks to this job. I was willing to stay a little while longer. Everyone around me seemed extremely happy at my answer, eating silently to not disturb my phone call, but bring me a beer. Great! Naomi, the manager, should be returning tomorrow and she'll be able to work with you to sign the tax papers and stuff. Legalities and all. You know, what's up with that? <laughs> right. Alrighty then! I look forward to seeing you in the cafe. Have a good night! Good night! You too! As I hung up, we had a gigantic cheer scaring her away. Yay! We have a new member of the family! Hold on, we're a family now? I already have one numbskull brother. Yeah, well, now you ha have another numbskull brother and two numbskull sisters. How is that for her always being numbskulls? I heard that! We've always been a family. We work so well together, it only makes sense. I was happy at Leah's excitement, but I was more excited to see what the future would hold. Would I like it here in the long run? Who knew? Still, it was something worth exploring. I continued to work up front with Leah and Joey. Since the rush was over, the attendance at the cafe seemed much more calm and manageable. Serving people became almost beautifully easy. Joey continued to impress me, managing every situation thrown his way with perfect ease. Even as Kay promoted him to supervisor, Still worked alongside me and Leah in serving everyone just like the server he was originally. Still, he took his breaks more often, and I wound up following him just to get some fresh air and spend some time with him. So, you plan to tell me your story soon? Perhaps. Maybe I want to be mysterious. <laughs> the smirk that painted his face always managed to make a small part of me blush, but I always held up a stoic and playful, playful face in return. Our conversation, despite being true and sweet, were filled with understanding. I would break away at the shelf while Joey was hiding behind me, and perhaps one day I would know all about him. He would learn about me in return. One day, however, he surprised me. Ooh, your bud! During his moments of silence between us, he would listen to his music quick as he regularly did it before I was hired on. I would join him with music of my own, but with one moment agree with one of his earbuds. Huh? Here. Take a listen to this new song I found with me. I was stunned. 
His sincere smile gave me the assurance that it wasn't a trick, but I was surprised to see him openly, openly sharing his music with me. Perhaps the Valentine panic was a good panic after all. And Joey's happiness. <laughs> and Joey's openness, and here is an achievement. Okay, so that was Joey's crowd of Valentine panic. Alright then, so I guess we'll end this video right here, and next time we'll go to Leah, Quinn, and Kennedy's round. So, thank you for watching, be sure to leave a like, and see ya in the next one! Yep, see ya!